Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about the rotational motion of an object, which is rolling without sliding. So we've already talked about how if the surface is frictionless, an object can just slide and have some translational kinetic energy. And we talked about in class how an object can spin and have some rotational kinetic energy. And now what I want to deal with is an object which is doing both. And specifically, it's doing both uh, in exactly the same way. So it's translating at the exact same speed that it's rotating, that it's rolling. So it's moving across the surface at the same speed that it's rolling. It doesn't have to be doing that. For instance, you've seen soccer balls like this one um, that have backspin that might be moving forwards and spinning backwards. That's a motion that can happen. Also, uh, if there's friction here, it could be moving, it could be rotating faster than it's moving forwards. Either one of those motions is possible, but we're not going to deal with them. We're going to deal with the special case of rolling at the same speed um, that it is translating. Okay, so to show you how um, this case works, I'm going to draw a picture of an object which is rolling without sliding. Okay, so here's some circular object. It could be a cylinder or a ball or anything that's, that can roll. And it is going to be translating forwards with some velocity v. And I'm going to make that, uh, that arrow come from the center of mass of the object because the whole object is moving in some complicated way. The stuff is moving around it, but its center of mass is just moving along that direction. So the question is, when this happens, can we find a connection between the velocity v that it's translating with and the angular velocity that it's rotating with? And it turns out, because we're dealing with just ro rolling without slipping, we can do this. And it's going to be an important result for most of what we're going to do in this topic of rotational energy. Okay, so let's think about our object moving from this initial point over here to this final point over here. It's rolling without sliding, and it's moving at a constant velocity v. This is essentially what a soccer ball would do, like in the video I showed at the very beginning, just rolling across the surface. So that distance, call it delta x. Uh, the definition of velocity, specifically of average velocity, is delta x over delta t. So I made that motion in some time period delta t, and the total distance the center of mass traveled was a distance delta x. Well, the definition of angular speed is going to be delta theta divided by delta t. So it's the same delta t, of course, because we're talking about the same motion, but we need to know what the delta theta was. How many times did that thing roll between the initial and the final points? So if you remember, I wrote down this relation in class that the arc length delta s, so that's a chunk of the circle, can be written in terms of the change in um, angle, change in radians, times the radius of the object. So that relationship is delta s equals r delta theta, and I don't care quite so much that you remember what that is, but you should remember that it's, it's there, it does exist. So that means that if we come down here, this delta theta should be just rearranging that equation, delta s divided by r. And that means that our omega can be written as delta s over delta r over delta t. Rewrite that as 1 over r delta s delta t. Now just think about what this arc length is. This is the distance that the circle traveled along the outside as it went along that path. But since it's not sliding, since uh, it doesn't ever skip as it travels, that delta s has to be equal to that delta x. So that condition I just specified is the entire key point here, is that this ball is not sliding in some arbitrary way or spinning around. It's the same distance it travels is exactly the same uh, distance around the surface that it moves, right? It goes like this. It's not sliding with respect to the ground. The ground is staying, um, is not sliding with respect to the surface of the ball. And so the distance that it travels is the same as the distance that it rotates. So that means delta x is delta s, and we can find a relationship between v and omega. Start with the definition of velocity, plug in x is equal to delta s. Delta s divided by delta t right here is r times omega, r times omega. So we've seen this result a few times already, but this is the key thing to remember, is that when you're rolling without slipping, you can use this. You cannot use this result, the relationship between, um, between velocity and omega, 
unless you are definitely rolling without slipping. So why is that result important? If you want to find the total kinetic energy of an object, which is going to be the translational kinetic energy plus the rotational kinetic energy, this, if it's rolling without slipping, you can solve for this omega and plug it in here and make this all in terms of just velocity. So you can see that now both the translational part and the rotational part is in terms of v, not in terms of omega. So this is an additional equation which allows you to eliminate omega from your equations. In the same way, if you know uh, omega but don't know v, you can use this equation to replace v in your equation. So this is a really, really key technique because you're going to be given either v or omega and you're going to need to decide if you can make this replacement because you'll have expressions like this that have both omega and v and you're going to need to decide in each situation whether you can make this replacement or not. And really, um, it's going to change whether you can even solve the problem because if you don't know that these two are related, then it might become an unsolved problem. So you need to know when it works and when it doesn't so you can know when to apply it. Okay, great. We're going to be dealing with this uh, more next class. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video, and I will see you then.